Alrighty, what's up, motherfuckers and scumbags and you pieces of shit? Peter Gilmore here for a Saturday afternoon, almost Saturday evening video right here on the main channel, Killer of Demons 669. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to this channel and my other four main channels, which are down there. You know where. In the description box below. Otherwise known as my pants. It's in my pants. So. So subscribe to my channels. Follow me on social media. If you're real. If you're not. You can go blow yourself up and go suck a dick, Mahoney. But if you're real. You want more. You want to follow me on social media. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Information down below. As always. So. Follow me on there. And. Friend me and whatever, whatever you want. Give a shit. But you gotta be real. If you're, if you're a fake account, you're a fake piece of shit. Then go be a piece of shit to somebody else. Because I'll just block you automatically. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, share the video all over the internet. Don't forget to tap and slap that fucking bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. And if you do, well, fuck you, man. You miss it. You miss it. Because you're gonna have to search my channel, search my name, and search my channels to find the video that you want to see. And you go to my live section, or my video section, or even my shorts section, my shorts section, and the latest video will be right there. That's pretty simple. That's it. That's pretty much it. But thank you all for support. Got a couple of subs here and there. Most probably, probably, uh, name is Fuck Trolls with their six billion accounts. Well, I give two shits. Because that's all they can do is make fake accounts and, and sell to my channel. Thank you for the promotion, asshole! But, I digress. But, take it as I come. But, if you're real and you're a real subscriber and you want more, you want, want to go sub to my other accounts, then do it! Like the video and, hey, throw a comment in or two. I don't give a shit. Not all about comments. If you want to leave a comment, that's fine. If not, thank you for the view and uh, move, keep it moving. That's pretty much it. All right. On this Saturday, late sat well, getting late Saturday afternoon, March the 18th, 2023, the final weekend of winter. Thank the Lord. Because Monday is spring. Had a nice 60 degree day yesterday. Today, not you know, a little bit cooler. 52 right now. It did get up to 53 earlier. Tomorrow is going to be like 39, 41 degrees. So an actual winter like day tomorrow on the final day of winter. And then right back up to 62 degrees by the by this time next weekend. But it's gonna, gonna get, get we're gonna get some rain next by the end of next weekend. But it is what it is. What are you gonna do here in the northeast? But in any case, hope everybody is safe on this this uh, glorious day and this weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. And for some of you, I hope you have a horrible weekend. But it is what it is. I'm having a pretty damn good weekend. My grandson surprised me and um. My step, my, uh, you know, Rose's daughter and my grandson surprised me coming up from Florida for the weekend to going back tomorrow, which sucks, but it is what it is, you know. You know, great to have him over for the, for the weekend, you know, and um, I'll be going back there in about a couple weeks, so going down to Florida. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's my spring vacation, and um, I got a couple of trips lined up in, um, and, um, well, I wanted to do one in May, but it has to be maybe before May 19th. Yeah, Katie Vick's birthday, because I have a, an event to go to on that night. Um, so I'll probably, if I don't do it in May, I probably will be going on, on um, some excursions in Atlantic City and shit like that. In June, I'm hoping for a longer vacation sometime in the summer, but I think, I'm thinking maybe I might, I might, I don't know what I'm doing in the summer yet. You know, it's three months, three, four months away, so I don't know yet. So I like to take another vacation, maybe go to LA. You know, go to Cali, visit some of my homies in Cali. 
or, you know, taking all the trip down, down south, no, not down south, south, but, you know, in the Washington, D.C. area. See, see, uh, what I can do down there. Maybe do, go do a weekend excursion down, down in D.C., but it is what it is. But my, my real vacation will be beginning, hopefully, the next couple weeks, but we'll see what happens with that. But anyway, on this Saturday afternoon, we're getting close to Saturday evening because the sun's going to be going down in about an hour or so. Well, officially in an hour or so from now, but it's going to get dark, dark by 7.30. Getting close to 7.40, which is nice. Two months will be around 8, 8.30 or close to 9. When, when the summer comes, when July comes, it'll be 9 o'clock when it gets officially dark. Holy crap. But I digress on that. So... It's coming. The spring, spring is around the corner on Monday, and then the summer will be right around the corner right after that. Going to be a good time. Baseball's beginning, and it is what it is. Speaking of baseball, freaking Brandon Nimmo. Ugh. If get any words for the Mets, Brandon Nimmo uh, hurt his ankle, and he has some knee soreness. They went through from an MRI today. It's not as bad as it looks, but he's going to be out for a while. He may not make the opening day roster. That sucks. And we all know Edwin Diaz is out for it a year. But, you know, Stevie Cohen, Uncle Stevie, you know, is being optimistic. I love this guy. Not like that. But he's saying, you know, he's telling the doctors, he's telling Diaz. He's like, we're, tr we're going to try to get you back by, the, the you know, September, October, you know, with the you know, Mets make the playoffs. I think that's a little bit of a stretch there, Uncle Stevie, but... But Diaz has got some great physical therapists, you know, giving him food and making sure, uh, you know, that knee gets back, back, back in shape and can, it can go ready to go. I would not, if he comes back in September and the Mets are, you know, deep in a playoff run, Uncle Steve is a genius. But I'm mean, about we'll to see what happens with that. We are officially. 12 days away, just under two weeks away from the 2023 season. Love it. I can't wait. The NCAAs are going on right now. A lot of bracket busters. Holy shit. Good thing I didn't do one this year. I would have lost. <laughs> I would have lost early because there was a lot of first round and second round upsets. Holy shit. It's March Madness. You know, anything could happen. But this is what it is. So, but uh, if your bracket got busted, well, too bad for you. And that's it. All right, not about that bullshit. Uh, let's quickly get to the video. And as the title below says, on this Saturday afternoon, getting close to Saturday evening, March 18, 2023, it is time for your late and out of date Ring of Honor TV review for March the 16th, 2023, from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. All right, this is week three of Ring of Honor TV, the third, I guess you can call it the third episode of Ring of Honor TV, the comeback. And, you know, coming off a pretty, pretty decent show last week. It was a little bit uh, shorter last week for some odd reason. This week, just about... You know, two hours like it was the first show, which was epic. That show was great. Last week was, it was alright. Not I mean, not great. It was still good, but not great. This week's show, man, the first couple matches were phenomenal. Not AJ Styles phenomenal, but phenomenal. They were great. So let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. Because we only got a 33-minute time limit. <laughs> so let's get into it. Alright, so... Our commentary team, as always, as always, excuse me, Ian Ricka Boring and the Pasta, Caprice Coleman. And as always, on ring announcing that schmuck, Bobby Cruz. But it is what it is. Yeah, I still want his job. Tony, call me. But I digress. All right, so we start off the night with our first match of the night, a Ring of Honor World Title Proving Ground Match. Now, if you don't know what a Proving Ground Match is, basically, it's like a number one contender's match. So, if the contender wins, he gets a future title shot of whatever title they're going for. It'll be the tag titles, the six-man tag team titles, world title, pure title, women's title, shit like that. So, basically, a number one contender's match. So, we had the champ, Claudio Castagnoli, taking on 
a good friend of ours. You know, he's been in Impact Wrestling. He's been in Lucha Underground. He's been in PWG. He's been all over the place, this guy. And that man is Willie Mack. My homie. Anyway, so this is non oh, it's been non-tonomized. It's like, no more contest mark, like I said. Blah, blah. Uh, ten minute time limit. Uh, if he goes ten minutes and he doesn't pin Claudio, he also will get a title shot. If the if it goes to a draw, that, that well, same thing. It, it goes time limit or draw, he gets a future title shot. This match was great. Uh, kind of quick match, seven minute match. Uh, Claudio works on the arm to start. Uh, Willie Mac arm drags Claudio to the floor. He teases a dive, but Claudio just walks away. Just in the nick of time. And then Willie Mac's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out my afro hair and I'm gonna comb my afro. He's got an epic afro. Not epic, epic afro, but I digress. Alright, to go back in, uh, Willie Mac snaps off a hurricane for a near fall. Here's a running kick to f kick to the chest. Kick to the titties. Well, man titties. Uh, on a hard close on a butterfly suplex get uh, get Claudio a near fall. Then uh, we get a little rest break with a 1905 chin lock. That gets broken up, and a Samoan drop into a standing moonsault gets a near fall on Claudio. And then they uh, get up, and they form each other out. No. Ooh, ooh. Stuff like that. William Mack goes for sky high, kind of circa D'Lo Brown. You're doing what the wheel do now. I can't do it. My, you know, I can't. I shouldn't have done that. Now my head's gonna kill me again. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so William Mack goes for sky high. He hits it for a near fall, but then Claudio gets gets comes right back with a running trigger uppercut. Oh, he knocked Willie Mack the fuck out. And Claudio gets the win in over seven minutes. Match was pretty damn good. Gave it three and a half out of five stars. After match, Claudio. Uh, with the code of honor to basically a knocked out Willie Mac. <laughs> damn. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. But damn, Claudio knocked him the fuck out. And still was able to give the code of honor at the end of the match. Go figure. But anyway, move on. Alright, match number two, we had Dante Martin of Top Flight along with his uh brother Darius Martin. He takes on uh well one member of the of the kingdom, and that's Mike Bennett, who was uh, in Brooklyn last week, if you uh, noticed, on BTE with Brandon Cutler, and the so-called first lady of professional wrestling. Really, he's the first lady of Ring of Honor. Like, it's not even true there, Maria Canales. You forgot Sarah Del Rey was number one. Mia Yim. Mm-hmm. Daisy Hayes. Anyone? But anyway, yeah, Mike Bennett was, was teamed up with Brandon Cutler last week. So if you saw BTE around the 10.30 mark, I was right there. But you don't, you don't see me for like a blip of a second. But still, I was there. I was on BTE. 100,000 views, baby. 100,000. Not as great as 2 million, but it is what it is. And, I, and if I'm bragging, I don't give two shits. So thank you, Brandon. So there's your credit. As people say I don't give credit, give credit to the people that, you know, I gave credit to In This Moment for 2 million hits, and I, I'm giving credit to Brandon Cutler and the Bucks for 100,000 plus hits. But I digress. Alright, alright. so Mike Bennett versus Dante Morin. I'm going to quickly uh, paraphrase a little bit. Uh, Maria calls it the scratching uh, off a big dive, takes Bennett out, then Maria calls it the scratching, which led Mike Bennett to hit a power driver on the ramp. Ow! Uh, but Dante beats the 20 count, 20 count in Ring of Honor, and in Japan. Remember that? And in, I think in AEW as well. But anyway, uh, then we get a springboard crossbody, a package sit-out powerbomb. Nice. Uh, gets a near fall on Bennett. Uh, then, a, uh, then we get a breather for a little bit. Uh, we get near the end on... Uh, Bennett grabs a Death Valley driver into a seated armbar, sending Dante over the ropes. Uh, he takes Dante up top because Hurricanrana down, setting up a frog splash. Very nice frog splash. And you thought Eddie Guerrero's frog splash was great. What do you mean it was great? I mean, he's great better than him. He's a gringo. Oh, okay. Well, Eddie, you didn't see it. I'll send you the tape. Okay, I I'm going to go eat a taco now. I'll get out of here. 
been day off. But anyway, but, but that was nice. That frog splash was nice. He like he did it and he like kind of twisted at the same time. That was fucking nice. Dante Martin gonna be a future, a big star. He's only twenty something years old. But anyway, uh. Bennett tries for the Kimura lock and gets reversed into a cradle, gives Dante a near fall, then a spinning half Nelson slam by Mike Bennett, the prodigy, you remember him from Ring of Honor, because he used that name, uh, gets the win in, uh, 10 minutes, basically. So, match was pretty good, gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars, after the match, I'm Matt Taven, comes in to beat on Dante, and then Darius Martin has to come in and save his little brother. And that's pretty much it. And we move on with that. That's that. All right, move on. All right, match number three, we have the Truth Busters, Ari Davari and um, Slim J. Take it on Grand Matalik. Oh, well, not Grand Matalik, but Matalik now. He's now not, I guess he's not Grand anymore. But I'm going to call him Grand. Grand Matalik and Blake Christian uh, in a tag team match. This came about, about a couple weeks ago. They've been going at, really, the Troop Busters have been going at Grandma Talik for the last two episodes, and then Blake Christian came out last week to save the Luchador, so we got a tag team match out of this. Smart Mark Fuck Sterling at ringside, of course. Pretty good, pretty decent match, almost a nine-minute match. Uh, kind of crazy match, you know, with flippy dippy dews. doos uh, Getting to the end, everything breaks down. Christian dies on a Div uh, Ari Davari, which leaves Grandma Talik to hit a Michinuka driver, of all things, to pin Slim J right under the nine-minute mark. Match was okay. Gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. And, um, that's pretty damn it. And pretty, well, pretty much it. That's just good as well. All right, after that, we got a video on the funky chicken himself, the, the man who does froggy boo, Mark Briscoe. And as always, when we talk about Mark Briscoe, we can't forget to pay homage and respect to his brother, Jay Briscoe. Reach for the sky, boy! And then when Mark talks, it's going to be crazy as shit. Period. Anyway, so Mark, uh, the video on Mark wanted the TV title. And, um, and Samoa Joe's history of success against the Briscoes from way back in the day. Way back, when the Briscoes were just, like, starting up, pretty much. Alright, then we see, um, then we actually get to Mark. Mark calls the TV title his destiny. He's been going at it since 2015. Eight-year journey trying to get the TV title. But for now, he wants to take out everyone who works for Mark Sterling. So basically, the troop busters and <laughs> anybody else that, that works on Mark Sterling these days. Maybe he should, he should fight the entire roster at WrestlePro because Mark Sterling and uh, Brian Myers kind of own that promotion. Well, it uh, used to be Pat Buck. I don't know if he runs it anymore, but he used to be there. So, hey, Mark, why don't you just go to Creator Pro and kick everybody's ass over there? Simple. And then when you're done, kick Mark Sterling's ass just for me. But I digress on that. But, yeah, Mark, uh, Mark Briscoe and Samoa Joe are going to be facing off for the TV title at Super Card of Honor. And I really hope Joe puts him over. And we have Mark Briscoe, the new TV champion of Ring of Honor. I think it would be fitting for him. And, you know, a present to Jay. So, I think it'll be a very emotional win for Mark. Eight years going after the title, which Jay Lethal had it. So many other people have that had a title, and Mark was going after it. Couldn't get it. Came close. Never got it. But, I think a super card of honor, he's going to beat Joe. And uh, become the new champ. And I hope he has a good, long reign with it. Do it for, do it for Jay. Do it for Jay Briscoe. And that's pretty much it. All right, give that three out of five stars, and we move on. All right, uh, I think this is match number four. We have a guy named Jeeves K, uh, who's part of the Truth Busters. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who the fuck this guy is, and he's in the in the Truth Busters. I, I guess I must I must have missed Dark Elevation because I have no no idea who the fuck this guy is. Anyway, he's taking on the crazy man from the Bronx, Eddie Kingston. Ah, uh, 
Anyway, Claudio has a seat in the crowd. Did you pay your ticket? <laughs> anyway, uh, kind of, kind of short match, and Eddie wins. Uh, you know, with the stretch plum, and I uh, made this guy named Jeeves K tap out real quick. Two, a little over two and a half minute match. And I gave it 2.25 out of 5 stars. Uh, afterwards, the troop busters uh, say there were some illegal tags, so that loss didn't count. What illegal tags? Okay. And uh, they say that uh, G Jeeves K gave Eddie his best match in AEW. Anyway, Davari's off is fed up and wants Christian and Metallic in a six-man tag team match. So I guess the, I guess Eddie will join them. I, I don't know. I'm like I'm, I'm like watching this promo. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> what? English, you idiot! All right, I guess we got a six man tag team match next week. So, all right, I'll allow it. Let me move on for that. All right, match number five. Finally, we get to the women. I got another proving ground match for the uh, well. Proof ground match for, well, not even for the women's title, but a chance at the women's title. We have the champ, Athena, taking on Hyann the Huntress. Oh, I remember her from WSU, from Shimmer. Oh, she was a beast down there. She, also a women's champion, by the way. Anyway, so Hyann the Huntress, or the Hunter, 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 whatever it is. But anyway, if you've seen her, you know what I mean. If, if you're a longtime Shimmer fan or Shine fan like I was, Back in the day, WSU, CCW-ish, you know, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, pretty decent match. Went a little over four and a half minutes. Uh, Athena wins with a cross face. Uh, there was a sick spot where Athena caught her on top. Spins into a power bomb to the floor. Ow! Jeez! There's not that much padding on the floor. Oh! I feel bad for Hyann. I think she needs. I need. I think she needs a chiropractor. And I'm not talking about me, you know, offering my services because if I do, I'll break her back even even more that her back was broken on the power onto the floor. Jeez. But anyway, Athena gets the win, makes uh Hyann the Huntress tap out, and that's pretty much it. After the match, uh, she sends her uh, Athena sends her face first into the title belt. Ding! It is what it is. I don't know who Athena's facing for the women's title. If she is, it is it does have a match for the uh, at Supercon Honor. It really should be Mercedes Martinez, but you know rematch. But I don't know what's happening with the women's title. But it is what it is, and we get that. All right, so I gave that match two point two five out of five stars, and we move on. All right, then we see Blake Christian and Grand Metallic. Uh, roll up to AR Fox and have the, um, they ask him to join them in their six-man tag team match for the Truth Busters. So there you go. So that's going to probably be next week on the program. All right. Match number six, Marcus Cross. I don't know. Uh, I forget who he is. I don't even remember. But anyway, he's taking on a man who we haven't seen in Ring of Honor since Christmas two years ago. Well, about to be two years ago. Christmas 2001, and that is the last real man. That's Silas Young, otherwise known as Von Kaiser! Yes, Silas Young, former Ring of Honor tag team champion, former six-man, I think he was a six-man tag team champion, but definitely Ring of Honor, former Ring of Honor TV champion. So he takes on Marcus Cross, and um, pretty short match, three-minute match, so, Silas gets to win with a PG Waja. Oh, I'm going to have a damn hard name, time saying this. The PG, not Peter Gilmore, PG, P E E G E E, Waha Plunge, which is basically a handstand into an Arabian moonsault. I think he's done that before, but I think he had a different name for it. But anyway, finishes this jabroni off, and that's pretty much it. So, glad to see Silas back. I hope it goes on a nice run. Eh, give him the pure title. Why not? Let him beat the fuck out of Wheel of Yuta, who's a type of guy that holds the title for about three months and still fucking sucks. He does. He sucks. But he had a good match last week with Timothy Thatcher, so I'll give him that one. 
but we move on. All right, after the match, Silas says no one measures up to him, and then Shane Taylor, oh boy, the big boy, he comes out to interrupt. He doesn't like Silas calling himself the most dominant TV champion ever, which he wasn't, because Shane Taylor held that belt for like a year and change, I think. He was a pretty damn good champ, not the greatest TV champion in history, because there's a lot. Sorry, Shane, you know, my boy and everything, but, you know, there's others before you that have held that title longer than you. Well, just about as long as you. But anyway, uh, so he challenges Silas to a match next week to see who is more dominant. So Silas is like, I'm in! That's going to be a big, beefy man slapping meat match next week. Can't wait. Let me move on. All right, then we uh, go to a, a promo from Athena once again. After her big win against Hyann the Huntress, she wants to know where Yuka Sakazaki is because she heard her. I think, I think it was on um Dark or Elevation. Great really fucked Yuna up, basically the one that looks like Yuna from Final Fantasy X and Ten Two. I hate that game. I hate I hate Ten Two. Ten dash two was X dash two. That game is boring. It got to me, but it got boring after a while. But anyway, uh. So, y Yuka, well, Yuka, I'm gonna call Yuna. Yuna Sakazaki is staying in Japan to get away from Athena. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Yeah, you, you stay in my house, but, you know, I have to keep you in the closet next to, because uh, I don't want to let, uh, you know, Kairi and Asuka and Io know. You know. Anyway. All right. Um, and she basically says, someone challenge, you, challenge me for the belt at Super Card of Honor. So, I don't know if it would be Yuka Sakazaki. It could be... You know, some bitch in the fifth row. I don't know. But I guess we'll have to see what happens next week on the program. And that's pretty much it. All right. Then we get to our next match for the six-man tag team titles. We had the embassy with my good friend, my confidant, the real prince of the prophecy. And that's Prince Nana. Uh, leading out the embassy of Brian Cage, the machine, and the gates of agony. Quan! I don't like Quan! And, uh... Uh, what is his goddamn name? Uh, Toa Loa. As they take on Dalton Castle Peacock. And the boys, the Tate brothers. Pretty damn good match. I was hoping for a, you know, a belt, you know, I was hoping the boys would get the belts back. And, you know, Dalton Castle and boys get the belts back. But, sadly, that did not, that did not happen as, uh, we got a double clothesline. One to the front and one to the back. Drops uh, Brent Tate, uh, Brandon being slammed on top of him for a double pin by the Gates of Agony. So they retain the six-man tag team belts in just under ten and a half minutes. Pretty decent match. I gave three out of five stars. After the match, the NBC beats the crap out of them off some more. Until Blake Christian, Grandma Talik, and the AR Fox make the save. Uh, then the champs hold up the belts. Oh, actually, they hold up the belts because forming uh, a tag team, I guess you can do that. Which sets up another match. And then, um, going after the titles, a span of 45 minutes, I guess. Okay. So, they had their match. They, you know, they, uh, Grandma Talik and Great Christian had their match with the Troop Busters. They found AR Fox. Like, hey, you want a six-man tag team match? We'll fight the Troop Busters again next week. And then after that, we're gonna go for the six-man tag team belts. Probably at Super Con of Honor. Okay. They're gonna win. I don't know. I don't know. Let me move on. All right. After that, we go to our next women's match. I gotta hurry this up. Uh, we got Trish Adora, who we saw last week, uh, taking on Madison Rain. Not great to see her, you know. But anyway, Madison Rain gets the win with the Lariat Tubman. Actually, uh, sorry, take that back. Trish Adora gets the win with the Lariat Tub Tubman clothesline. And finishes Madison Rain off in uh, under five and a half minutes. Match is all right. Gave it 2.25 out of five stars. And there you go. So, uh, Trisha Dora picking up a couple of big wins the last couple weeks. And then you move on. All right. Then we see Top Flight not done with the kingdom. So, they say next week, Darius is ready to take out I'm Matt Taven. So, so we went from Darius going after Mike Bennett and losing. Now, Dante, uh, Dante losing to Mike Bennett, I should say. Darius takes on Matt Taven next week, so. And on top of that, Top Flight gets a tag team title shot against uh, the Ass Boys on Wednesday Night Dynamite this week. 
There you go. Let me move on. All right, then we have uh, the Outrunners, uh, Truth Magnum, and uh, Turbo Floyd. Not Turbo Pink Floyd, but interesting, interesting name. Uh, taking on the makeshift team of Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel. And um, they get the win after uh, Turbo Floyd is sent to the outside. Daniels hits the Angel's Wings into the Lightning Spiral. Whatever that is. And they get the win. Match a day, three out of five stars. After the match, Aussie Open come out. They insult them for being old farts. And then we get a challenge made. And um, match accepted. So we'll see what happens with that. I think it'll be next week. Let me move on. All right. Then we get a video on Clark Connors, who, he's, who we've seen in New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, challenging Wheeler Utah for the pure title. Uh, is this the final match? Let me just check here. Yeah. All right, this is your main event of the evening for the pure title. Pure rules, of course. Look at that. This was a pretty good match. Clark Connors and Wheeler, Utah. Um, pretty good match. Back and forth match. Clark Connors hits the pounce. But not as good as Keith Lee or Monty Brown. But you did a good job. Anyway, uh, he hits that, hits that and sends Wheeler, Utah into the 15th row. But anyway, uh, he, tries to, he tries again, but he gets blocked. Judas scores with a top row form. They go back and forth for a while. Uh, Judah punches him, him in the face with a closed fist, causing a warning uh, for both men. Got a warning. Uh, but that's fine with Clark Connors. He grabs the ankle lock to make Judah burn a rope break. So I think it was the second or third one. Uh, Judah ties up the arm with something like a cross face. Then he switches into, into the seat belt. And he made uh, Clark Connors tap out. Just under 10 minutes. And uh, there you go. That's pretty much it. So, Yuta gets the win. Match gave 3 out of 5 stars. So, we'll see what happens with him going into Supercard of Honor and who he might face. Because I think all the titles will be on the line. And we'll find out who's next to go into the Speech for the Sky uh, ladder match. We already have the Lucha Brothers in. So, we don't, you know, hopefully, I think we're going to get one, maybe two or three more teams in that crazy ladder match. It's probably going to steal the show. Uh, next year, Mark and Mark Briscoe and maybe uh, Samoa Joe. But we'll see. Because I think that'll be Mark Briscoe's, you know, celebration, getting the TV title, doing good for Jay Briscoe and everything. It's going to be a good time, you know, and that's it. Anyway, that's it, everybody. Thank you all for watching Ring of Honor TV this week. Gets a solid 7 out of 10 stars. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. And that's pretty much it. All right, I'm going to edit this up a little bit. And then I'm going to probably about... A half hour to about an hour from now, I'm going to go live with my SmackDown and Rampage review. And that's pretty much it. Uh, NXT, I probably might do tomorrow, just abbreviated review, because I've had a really, uh, you know, kind of up and down week. So I want to get everything done and get, get start fresh on Monday. And that's pretty much it. All right, I got to go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, go fuck yourselves. And fuck you, man. Until next time, peace. Ha!